Right then folks, it's time for some more exclusive gameplay of Battlefield Hardline. This time you're looking at Dust Bowl playing the brand new Hotwire game mode. For this video, you'll be spectating a lovely chopper sequence where myself and Mash Day absolutely wrecked objective cars from above. This is one of the best tactics to use in Hotwire, especially on this map Dust Bowl, if you don't want to be the driver of one of those cars, as you can attract rather a lot of attention if you do. Main thing to remember with Hardline is to keep moving. Whether you're in an objective vehicle or you're just in one of the standard ones, you need to be on your toes all of the time. As I mentioned, any vehicle is a target, and because standard ammunition in the gun you're holding, whether it's an assault rifle, an SMD, a shotgun, a pistol for that matter, does damage now to any moving vehicle, danger is always present. But back to the chopper. As I said, we found this to be one of the most effective tactics in the game mode on this map. The air is open and uncluttered, which came as a massive relief to me, because in Battlefield 4 there's a lot going on up there, and do you know what? I don't use air vehicles, in fact I don't use vehicles a lot in Battlefield 4 at all. I'm just one of those guys that prefers infantry combat, but hot wires turn me around a little bit. I think I like the fact that I'm just driving along and I'm having a good time, or the objective is to take out the vehicle rather than try and run away from it because that's what I kind of feel like I'm doing in Battlefield 4 all the time. It felt nice that I was the guy wrecking from above for once and not some level 100 in his jet. Because the chopper isn't an objective in hot wire mode, that wouldn't make any sense, it would just be stupid if you could just fly off with one of the objectives, we were slightly less of a target for the people that were running and driving about on the floor. They weren't overly concerned of the large helicopter that was just circling around up there. And uh, we exploited that massively. I'm not in any way trying to suggest that the choppers are overpowered, because they aren't. As I said, pretty much any projectile weapon in Hardline can do damage to this vehicle, but what you really want to watch out for is the professionals wielding their sniper rifles. They've got a new attachment, and they sure as hell weren't afraid to use it in the playtest that I took part in, I can tell you that. It's called the 338 Magnum Round, and any of you in the audience who happen to have played Bad Company 2, you'll know exactly what's coming. The Magnum Round is only equipable to bolt-action rifles, and it extends the drop-off damage range of these weapons very significantly. As an added bonus too, you can take down a chopper pretty sharpish. The bullets themselves do directional damage to vehicles, just the same way that in Battlefield 4, depending on where you hit a vehicle with a projectile, it will do varying different amounts of damage. So for example, if I hit the transport chopper dead centre from the front with one of those bullets, then I would inflict more damage than if I was to hit it from the side, for example. It's a valuable asset to have as a professional, and considering they no longer have access to the spawn beacon, that's now with the mechanic, or as it's called the sat phone in Hardline, in case you didn't know, and they don't have access to C4 anymore, they haven't been able to steal it from the Enforcer class, this round kind of felt like it might be a little bit underpowered, but now that that 338 Magnum round is in there, they've got their power back. But to be honest, besides the fact that this was probably the best tactic I used all the time when I was in the play session, one of the best places to be in Hotwire is in the objective vehicle. If you want a speed boost via nitrous oxide, then you need to make sure you equip the stunt driver perk in the spawn menu, and I'd recommend having that equipped whether you're planning to drive a vehicle or not in Hotwire, so make sure that you've always got that equipped. It can give you a small speed boost over drivers who might not have that equipped. They might have the grappling hook or something else in that slot, and it means that you can hit the shift button on your on your keyboard or whatever the boost button is on console and you can get yourself out of some sticky situations or if you're in a high speed chase it allows you to catch up to the vehicle in front of you. The map design on Drust Bowl really did lend itself to hot wire. There were some larger open sort of roads that go between the two objectives. You've also got some dirt tracks that go right all the way around the outside of the village. You've got some smaller, tighter pathways that sort of wind their way through the middle of the map, and you've got a motel section in the middle. So the further you get into the middle, the tighter the gameplay gets, and the further you move out, the more space you've got to move around. And I have to say, it's a really, really well-designed map for Hotwire. 
plenty of different avenues for you to take. And if you do happen to come up against one of the helicopters, and they are following you, if you're good at driving, uh, and you should be if you play Battlefield for a while, there are plenty of vehicles for you to use in previous games, then you should be able to get yourself out of a situation where the helicopter's on your back. And like I said, for I think the third time in this video, if you really wanted to take that chopper out of the sky, you could. Lean yourself out of the window, turn round and fire your machine gun into the metal hull and you'll start to do the damage. So there we have it, a little taste of Hotwire. Don't forget, this is one of the maps and modes that you can play tomorrow when the beta drops. I'm not really sure what time it drops, but it drops tomorrow. You can preload it now on all consoles and on PC too. It's going to be around 11 gigabytes for PC and next generation consoles. But for the PS3 and the Xbox 360, the download should only be around 4 gigabytes. And you've got absolutely no excuse to not give this game a try. It's an open beta, you don't need a code to play. So if you want something different to play for the rest of the week, I highly recommend you download this and give it a go. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, drop me a rating and a comment, it's always appreciated. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.